Hey guys, so just a couple of hours ago, 538 released their 2022 midterm forecast. They have released their forecast for this year's Senate, House, and gubernatorial elections. And in this video, we will be taking a look at the gubernatorial forecast, which is looking very favorable for the Democratic Party as we are just four months away from this year's midterm elections. And quite frankly, the gubernatorial elections and the governors that are elected will have a much larger impact on the everyday lives of Americans than the Senate elections because honestly, the U.S. Senate does not really do that much. So looking at the gubernatorial elections, looking at this map here, this map is very favorable for the Democrats because just a couple of months ago, they were expected to lose many races across the country. Many of the Democratic incumbent governors were expected to lose their re-elections. However, as a result of some pretty bad candidates being dominated by the Republicans, the Democrats' chances at winning more governors than they did last time in 2018 have been the highest they've been since the very early portions of Joe Biden's presidency. And so even though Joe Biden is very unpopular nationwide, a lot of the good candidates that the Democrats have nominated are keeping them afloat in this year's 36 gubernatorial elections. And so looking at this map from 538, it has been made with a combination of polling data expert analysis, as well as the incumbency factor, fundraising, and overall trends in each state. So obviously this map really is not exactly the best to look at. And so we will be filling Filling in the solid states on this map here, which is much better to look at. And then we'll be taking a closer look at the closer races. So starting off with the solid races for the GOP, obviously they're going to have pretty easy wins in the very traditionally Republican states. They are expected to win Iowa and Ohio most definitely with Kim Reynolds and Mike DeWine as the incumbent GOP governors. They even have a solid projection in both Vermont and New Hampshire, where Phil Scott and Chris Sununu are both running for their fourth two-year terms. And finally, in the states of Texas and Florida, these two big states, basically Republican states at this point in time, are both projected to go to the GOP with over 90% confidence. In the state of Texas, 96% chance of victory for Greg Abbott. This is not too surprising. In 2018, he won his first election by 13%. And even though Better O'Rourke is a very good candidate on the Democratic side, he is still expected to get absolutely destroyed in this election. And that is simply because of the fact that this is not a good year for the Democrats. And Texas still, even though it is getting closer, it has been a GOP stronghold state for decades. And in the state of Florida, 95% chance that Ron DeSantis defeats former Governor Charlie Crist. Chris was elected to one term as the governor of Florida all the way back in 2006, 16 years ago. So really, it is very unlikely that Charlie Crist is going to return to the governor's mansion in Florida. In 2018, this was actually the closest race of the year. Andrew Gillum came within 0.4% of Ron DeSantis. However, in this election, Ron DeSantis is more popular than ever, and it will be very difficult to defeat him. So looking at the map here, 23 governorships just from the solid states. The Democrats will get a lot less because a lot more of the more competitive races are currently held by Democrats. So for these solid states, I have the states of California, Hawaii, Colorado, Illinois, New York, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. This will give the Democrats 13 governorships. If you look at the state of Colorado, Jared Polis it has a 95% chance of winning, even though this state may be a little bit closer. It is still a state that pretty much the GOP has absolutely no chance of winning. And the first flip on this map is the state of Massachusetts, where Maura Healy is expected to succeed Charlie Baker. Charlie Baker is the incumbent Republican who will not be running again this November. So with Charlie Baker out of the race, he was the only Republican that could win a gubernatorial election in Massachusetts. The GOP has no more strong candidates in this state, so Massachusetts basically one of the most democratic states in the country is going to revert back to the Democratic Party for the governor election this November. And so basically with these solid states filled in, a solid advantage for the GOP with 23 states already. And the GOP has had the majority of governors across the country since the 2010 midterm election. So 2022 really is not going to be the year that the Democrats are going to flip back this balance. However, the Democratic Party is still going 
going to most likely gain governors after these midterms overall. They are still expected to lose some governors. However, with the flips that they will gain, they will still end up with more governorships. So looking at the likely races on this map, there are quite a few of them currently held by Democrats, starting off with the state of Connecticut. Ned Lamont is running for his re-election. In 2018 against Bob Stefanowski, he only won by 3%. However, in this election, he is projected to win by a much larger margin in Connecticut. He has an 88% chance of winning there, so pretty much Ned Lamont is going to win his re-election at this point in time. Moving on to the state of Maine, Janet Mills was also first elected in 2018, and in the state of Maine, there are no term limits, however, you cannot win three consecutive terms in a row. So Paula Page, who was elected in both 2010 and 2014, was unable to run again in 2018. However, in these midterm elections, Paula Page is now running for a third non-consecutive term. And if you look at the polling numbers here in this race, Janet Mills has consistently led over the GOP nominee. And so here in the state of Maine, I really do think that Janet Mills is going to come out on top, but really this election is not going to be that lopsided for the Democrats. Currently, Janet Mills has a 75% chance of winning, so the state of Maine will also be likely for the Democrats. In the state of Maryland, this is a very messy election. In 2018, of course, Larry Hogan defeated Ben Jealous by a margin of 12%. And so Larry Hogan was also the only Republican that could win in the very solidly Democratic state of Maryland, just like Charlie Baker was the only Republican that could win in Massachusetts. But in the state of Maryland, on the GOP side, currently... 538 believes that it will be Kelly Schultz that ends up winning the nomination. We're really just going to have to see what happens in the Maryland race. Well, on the Democratic side, currently Peter Frankchot is the front runner. However, it is still a very close primary. Even though Frankchot has led in all the polls that have been released, he still only has 16% in the latest poll that has been released. However, 538 does believe that Frankot will be the nominee, and so he does give him a 92% chance of victory. And even if Frankot is not the nominee, it will still likely go to the Democratic Party. So the candidates here really don't change too much. Maryland's at its core is still a very liberal state. Moving on to the state of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer here is also expected to win by a likely margin. Now, this is actually surprising because the state of Michigan typically is a very close one. Joe Biden only won it by a margin of 3% in the presidential election, and the Senate election in 2020 was even closer than that. So Gretchen Whitmer in 2022 is in a very good position, and one of the big reasons for this is because the GOP primary was absolutely flipped on its head when the Board of Elections announced that James Craig, the previous front runner would not be able to show up on the ballot because he did not file enough valid signatures. So as of right now, 530 believes that Ryan Kelly is going to come out as the GOP nominee. We're really just going to have to see what happens here. But Gretchen Wimmer, as a result of this, is polling very well against the potential GOP candidates that she will face this November. And so looking at the state of Michigan, Gretchen Wimmer right now has a 91% chance at winning her re-election. So the state of Michigan will also be likely for the the Democratic Party. And in the state of Minnesota, another Democrat running for their re-election. This time, it is Tim Walz. Tim Walz was elected in 2018 by over 10% of the vote. In 2022, he is also going to do relatively well. If you look at the polling for this race between Walz and Scott Jensen, Tim Walz does lead on average by around 3-4%. to However, according to the 538 forecast, he has an 86 percentage chance of victory and should win by around 8 to 9 percentage points. So the state of Minnesota, as well, will be likely for the Democrats. And so obviously, these states, most of them with Democratic incumbents, are still going to be in the Democratic column. They are going to be a little bit more competitive, though, than many of the solid GOP states. So this is not... The, you know, this does not show that the Democrats are necessarily winning all of the competitive races, just the fact that a lot more of their incumbents are in closer races than the Republican incumbents. 
And the final likely Democratic state on this map is the state of New Mexico. I did find this to be a little bit surprising. Michelle Lujan Grisham is not the most popular governor in her state. Against Mark Ronchetti, who is actually a good candidate on the GOP side, Michelle Lujan Grisham is very vulnerable in this election. She does have a sexual misconduct allegation against her, and obviously that will not bode well for her in a statewide election. However, the abortion thing is going to help Democrats nationwide. That is going to help Lujan Grisham as well. Well, in the state of New Mexico. If you look at the polling numbers, though, the polls really have been very close between the two candidates. However, the general bias in favor of the Democrats in the state of New Mexico is probably what is going to help Lujan Grisham win her re election. She currently has a 78% chance at winning a second term in the state of New Mexico. Now, in the only likely Republican state on this map, the state of Georgia, the Republicans are favored to win this race, even though Stacey Abrams is the Democratic nominee. Of course, in 2018, this was a very close race. The Georgia gubernatorial election was decided only by a margin of 2.4%. However, this year, that is likely not to happen. Not 2.4%, 1.4% separated Kemp and Abrams in the previous election. However, in this November, the polling numbers show a completely different different story. There's only been one poll so far where Kemp and Stacey Abrams are even tied. In all of the other previous polls released, Brian Kemp has been leading by pretty significant margins. And the abortion issue in the state of Georgia really is not going to help the Democrats that much. It may help them a little bit. However, Stacey Abrams is not likely to gain any sort of significant advantage as a result of Roe v. Wade being overturned. And in the state of Georgia, Brian Kemp has now an 84% chance of winning his re-election, so the state of Georgia will be likely for the GOP. And now we have seven more races. These are the lean and tilt states. Looking at the lean states on this map, many of them can be found in the Midwest, in the states of Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. Starting off here with the state of Wisconsin, or starting off here with the state of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro currently is expected to defeat Doug Mastriano. Doug Mastriano is probably one of the worst candidates that the Republicans could have nominated in any race across the country. He is very much to the right of the mainstream. He is also very big into Donald Trump. He did get the endorsement of Donald Trump. However, in a state that Joe Biden won, Josh Shapiro, I don't think, is going to actually have too much trouble winning this election. If you look at the polling numbers for this race in Pennsylvania, to succeed Tom Wolf, who was re-elected by a very solid margin in the previous midterm election, in 2022, Josh Shapiro has led in every single poll that has been released by a margin of 4, 3, and 3 percentage points in the two polls released just a couple of weeks ago. And so Josh Shapiro right now is in a good position, although compared to John Fetterman in the Senate election, Fetterman is doing significantly better against Mehmet Oz. But Josh Shapiro in the state of Pennsylvania currently has a 73 percentage chance of victory against Doug Mastriano. And currently he is projected to win 51 percent of the vote to Mastriano's 46.7 percent. Moving on to the state of Wisconsin, Tony Evers actually has a 64% chance of winning his re-election. I did find this to be very surprising that Tony Evers is actually leading in his race right now against Rebecca Cleefish. Tony Evers is running for re-election. He was first elected in 2018. In 2018, he defeated incumbent Scott Walker, who was running for a third term. However, in 2022, with Joe Biden in the White House, Tony Evers would make history if he won the gubernatorial election because he would be the first gubernatorial candidate in Wisconsin to win the gubernatorial election in a midterm year when they are of the same party as the president since 1990 with Tommy Thompson. So the historical trends are not favoring Tony Evers here. However, his polling numbers have been very strong. If you look at the polling here for Tony Evers, he has led in every single poll that has been released. And currently, of course, he has a 64% chance of winning against Rebecca Cleefish. I think against Tim Mitchells, Tony Evers will actually do even better. And so if you look at this race here, it will also be lean for the Democrats, Wisconsin as well. And so this will give the Democrats now 21 governorships. 
And the final lean state on this map is actually the state of Oregon. This I did find to be pretty surprising. The Democrats have an equal percentage chance of victory in Wisconsin and Oregon, basically. 63% chance of the Democrats come out on top in the state of Oregon. In the Oregon gubernatorial election, the Democrats have pretty much made a big mess out of it. In the last couple of years, it was Kate Brown who was leading the state. However, in 2016 and 2018, she won by pretty small margins of just around six to seven percent and considering that Oregon is typically a very solid democratic state Kate Brown is not a popular governor and did not win by popular margins and in 2022 the state of Oregon flipping is really not that unlikely. If you look at the gubernatorial map here, I mean, you have Democrats leading the states of Kentucky and Louisiana with John Bell Edwards in Louisiana and Andy Bashir in Kentucky. So the Republicans winning in Oregon really is not that surprising. You have a Republican, Phil Scott, in the state of Vermont, who has a 95% chance of winning. And Vermont, of course, is the home state to Bernie Sanders. So the state of Oregon can actually flip this November, and Christine Drazen actually leads in the only poll that has been released out of the state. Now, the main reason for the Democrats is horrible numbers in the state is because Betsy Johnson is running as an independent. She used to be a Democrat, however, she left the party very recently and decided to run for governor as an independent, and that is hurting the Democrats as the liberal vote is being split. But in the end, independent candidates do not get as many votes as polls may suggest. So as of right now, Tina Kotek is still favored to win her race. So with the lean governorships filled in, the Democrats now have 22 governorships, and there's actually only one lean governorship for the GOP, and that is the state of Alaska, which I think is actually pretty surprising, with Mike Dunleavy running for a second term. Now, the main reason for this is because of how split the vote in Alaska is going to be. In the end, Mike Dunleavy is still probably going to win the election. Alaska is going to use ranked choice voting, so that is going to help the incoming governor here. Mike Dunleavy currently has a 70% chance of winning. If you look at the race in Alaska in 2018, of course, Dunleavy was elected and defeated Mark Begich. Uh, the Begich family is, of course, very well known in the state as a Democratic political family. But in the state of Alaska for this election, the polling, of course, does favor the GOP. Bill Walker is not going to win his re-election. He is the former governor and is now running as an independent, but he is pretty much going to split the more liberal vote with Les Scara, the Democratic nominee, and so that is going to make it so that Mike Dunleavy is going to have a pretty smooth path to his re-election. And so in the state of Alaska, that is going to be lean, and now we have three final tilt races. Starting off with the state of Arizona, where Doug Ducey, the incumbent Republican, will of course not be able to run for a third term. But in 2022, the GOP is going to nominate Kerry Lake, and on the Democratic side, Katie Hobbs is expected to be their nominee. And so this race, currently, the GOP is very slightly favored in. The polling numbers don't really tell us too much about this race. Many of them are very old, and the two more recent polls have been funded by political parties. So as of right now, Katie Hobbs, Carrie Lake, they are in a dead heat. But currently, 538 gives Carrie Lake a 55% chance of defeating Katie Hobbs. But we're really just going to have to see what happens in this state in the next couple of months with the polling numbers that we do see. But as of right now, Arizona is tilt for the GOP, at least according to this forecast. Another tilt Republican state is the state of Kansas, with Laura Kelly as the incumbent Democratic governor. She defeated Chris Kobach in the previous election, and in this election against Derek Schmidt, the Democrats are actually expected to lose, and this is pretty much going to be the only one loss for the Democrats according to this forecast. And finally, in the state of Nevada, Steve Sisolak has a 58% chance of victory in Kansas. The percentage chance of victory for Derek Schmidt is 57%. But in the state of Nevada, Steve Sisolak is doing all right. He is doing better than Cortez Masto on the Senate level. So if Cortez Masto does win her re-election, Steve Sisolak is pretty much guaranteed to win as well. The polling numbers are looking good for Steve Sisolak, although it is still pretty close, so the race can still go for the GOP. But as of right now, 538 does give the race in Nevada to Steve Sislak by a very small margin. So with the final 
2022 gubernatorial forecast from 538 at least at this point in time. 27-23, this is a gain for the Democratic Party from the amount of governorships that they won in the previous midterms. And so yeah, we will be visiting this forecast in the next couple of months as 538 does update them based off of recent events. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.